Hi, everyone. Welcome to Pivotal Stories here at Spring One Platform 2018. I'm Jeff Kelly, and my guest is Ryan Johnson, who is lead architect as well as software engineering practice lead at Accenture. Ryan, welcome. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Accenture and their view of the market and what's happening out there. You, you work with, obviously, lots and lots of customers, a lot of large enterprises. What's the landscape look like out there? What are some of the biggest concerns you're hearing from enterprise customers? Yeah, I think the biggest concern we hear with most of our customers is how do we transform to Agile? How do we both, from a technology Agile side is a big piece of it, um, but also around business agility. So how, how are clients rotating to be Agile and especially, especially aligning around products as opposed to technologies the way they traditionally have? Um, so lots of concerns there. How do they evolve through that? How do they get speed to market faster? Um, so I think that's a big, big trend we're seeing across all of our clients. And again, you're working with a lot of large enterprises who have legacy software, legacy technology, and just as important, legacy approaches, processes, and culture. So it's, a, as you mentioned, it's both technology transformation, but also business and, and culture transformation. Uh, so you've been working with Pivotal now for, uh, for about a year, I believe, uh, since you've founded the Accenture Pivotal Business Group. Tell us a little bit about that. Give us an update. It's been a year. Sure. And, and remind us what the mission of, of that group is. So the Accenture Pivotal Business Group was really created to help Accenture and Pivotal uh, jointly sell um, at our many, 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 many uh, joint clients we have, right? I think across the Fortune 100, um, we share almost all of those clients. So Pivotal has, has traditionally done a great job of, of being that early adopter, driving a lot of the XP and cloud native technologies. Accenture has a lot of scale behind it, right? We have, uh, I think we're, we're just over half a million employees now. We're getting very close to it. So a very large and global workforce. So looking at how can we combine those two early adoption as well as scale to, to help some of the very largest clients that we both share. Mm -hmm. And maybe dig into that a little bit more. Uh, I know certainly from the Pivotal perspective, it's going to help Pivotal scale their business. And from Accenture's perspective, it helps uh, bring some of that uh, modern development capabilities to the company. Uh, how does that translate to real benefits for the customers? We really ground it in these sort of principles of Agile, right? As we start to scale, um, the predictability that that Agile brings for you the ability to move fast. Um, you know, kind of been the key topics here at Spring, and, and I'm sure over the past several years have been key topics at Spring One around predictability, scalability, first mover kind of mentality. And how do you do that when you may have, you know, some of our large clients, they have 10 or 20 or 30,000 uh, engineers on their staff as well. So how do they continue to deliver the cost promise that they have to the customers today, but also begin to evolve and, and create those new promises and those new sort of delightful experiences that they're, they're promising their customers in the future. And what does it really look like on the ground? Uh, I understand you have a facility in Columbus, uh, the Columbus Innovation Hub. Uh, talk about you know, what, what do customers and clients really interact with when they're there? What does it look like? Is it, is it a typical Accenture engagement or does it look a little different? So the Columbus Innovation Hub is very different. Um, we like to, or we've coined the term sort of being a startup within Accenture, which is an interesting term and I, one I've seen at a lot of other talks that I've seen this week around creating that innovation lab and sort of separating them from the rest of the company and allowing them to operate independently. Um, so that's the mentality we have. We have about 100 uh, people that work out of our Columbus Innovation Hub right now and looking to grow over the next, the next year or so to, to about double that size. Um, typical engagement, very similar to, to what uh, Pivotal or Cloud Native brings to, to an engagement. So a lot of design thinking, um, bringing clients in, obviously a lot of sticky notes in it, and whiteboarding and, the, and those types of things, which I would say is not necessarily traditionally how Accenture has done work. Um, so often it's, it's joint between Pivotal and Accenture, which is, I think, great for, for both companies, right? They, they get the sort of credibility and, and tradition that Accenture brings in delivering these large-scale transformation products. Um, in Accenture, I'll use the term coolness. Accenture gets the coolness that Pivotal brings, right? We, uh, we're going away from uh, button-downs and suits to hoodies slowly and slowly. I uh, gotcha. Um, so, so I think bringing both of those and having both companies in the room and both of them having a voice is great. Typical engagement, you know, there's no typical engagement. We're both involved. Um, I'll say typically we've, we follow a sort of get the platform installed. And, and when I talk about platform, that's really the PCF platform. Installed, running and then deliver on that, that promise that we've made to them that we can put an app onto the platform or two or three or four apps, whatever the case may be, and deliver that value that, that PCF really touts as you know, being able to go fast forever. Um, so typically we do that, and then at that point, that's where Accenture starts to take a lead in how do we scale this. Um, 
I know everyone would love if their development staff was located in the U.S., but that's not reality for many of the businesses, right? They're, they're a for-profit business, so we need to look at how do we sort of leverage Accenture's global network around the world to drive some of the cost efficiencies as we start to become more mature in our ability and our processes around delivering applications to PCF. And what are some of those keys to scaling something like the pivotal way? Sure. What are some of the keys to that? We take a three-step approach to it, uh, and we call it a sort of circle of control and a circle of concern. So the first one is around the circle of control is having your engineers master their craft, right? And a, a term I slow, slowly have seen creep up is what they're calling craftsmen. So we're not calling them engineers anymore. They're now craftsmen or craft engineers, um, which, which is an interesting term. Um, but it's really about having each individual engineer become a master in TDD and understand why we do TDD and understanding how to deploy an application. Um, I think especially in Accenture, because we have been on these large scale engagements, a lot of our engineers have never started a project from scratch or it's only been a test project from scratch. When we get into these smaller engagements where we're, we're looking at a microservice type architecture, breaking down a monolith, building those new applications is very fundamental to what we need to do. So mastering how do I create a good and flexible or an agile architecture, as, as the term tends to be. So really having them master that craft. Uh, then we really look for them to expand beyond there. So once they're building great software, how do I get it deployed all the time, right? So CI, CD pipelines, um, uh, those types of things that, that you see in a traditional company where a different responsibility, right? Throwing it over the wall to QA, throwing it over the wall to a build and deploy team, starting to take those back from those teams and say, no, I'll be responsible for my software from the time I write my first line of code all the way through when it's deployed to production. So that's kind of the second step. And then the last step, and it's this one's less about the engineer's responsibilities and more about the executives. Is how do they allow the business to be agile, right? So we talked about a little bit about that business agility term, but when we look at it, it's how are you funding projects, right? You should be funding teams now and not projects, which is a very foreign concept for a lot of our, our leaders that we encounter. You know, an interesting conversation we get into is, is, is around a sort of executive compensation and how do you start to change their compensation package to be in line with the agile sort of groundswell that's coming up and it, it's really transforming their business, but unless you get their priorities aligned with, with what we're delivering, um, there will always be a bit of a tension there between them. Right, that whole idea of how do you fund a product uh, that you don't necessarily even know what it's going to end up being or how long it's going to take to build, or there really is no end to it versus right. the traditional uh, approach where you're, you, you lay out the blueprint, this is what we're going to build, this is how long it's going to take, here's the resources we need, here's the budget, go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, we've heard that as well from customers. That that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a foreign concept to us. How do, we, how do we think about that? And I like the idea of you fund teams and not projects. That's, that's interesting. I did want to touch on one other area that uh, we chatted about briefly uh, earlier was uh, you're interested in kind of the work-life balance of software engineers. Talk about your work there and what you're thinking about sure. in that respect. Yeah, so I, I like to call it sort of the, the renaissance of the engineer right now, right? Coming from a traditional consulting background, I was sort of born into the age of four weeks on the road, spending nights in hotels, right? 60, 80 hour work weeks, whatever it may be. I think those are gone as we see more companies like Pivotal, um, you know, and a lot of the other sh smaller startups start to embrace sort of a, let's take back control, right? We're only gonna work 40 or 50 hours a week, you know. 50 tends to be the upper limit I see, um, right? There's always some things that you need to stretch for. Um, but taking back that worth like balance and saying, look, I expect you when you're here to work really hard and, and you know, some, one of our, uh, Clients use the term hard eight, right? I want a hard eight hours of work, so I don't want you off in meetings all day. I want you at, at your desk, right, with your pair writing software for eight hours a day. Um, but then when you're done, I want you to be done. I don't want to be deploying on nights and weekends, right? I think that's slowly going away as tools become more advanced and we can do kind of blue-green deployments where the software is always up and running and we slowly bleed traffic over. So I think we're seeing a lot, of, a lot there, and, and as that, that starts to change, Accenture's had to change with it, right? So specifically within the Innovation Hub, we're, we're focused around that 40-hour work week. We're focused around keeping our people local. You know, it, more than ever when people talk about millennials love to travel, that's not actually what we're seeing on the ground. They hate traveling for work. They love traveling for pleasure, so it's how do you balance that and, and have both the clients feel like they're connected to our people, right, even though they may be remote but also not having our people constantly traveling out to the client sites. And I think, you know, there's a lot of tools around video conferencing and remote pair programming and those types of things that 
allow us to connect with our clients even when we're not physically at our client sites. All right. Uh, and so, last question, what's on your agenda, let's say, the next six, 12 months, you and Accenture at large in terms of working with Pivotal and helping customers with their transformation? Sure, so a lot of uh, clients are keenly interested in our app transformation that we we're working with on Pivotal, so how do we take a large suite of applications, um, varying anywhere from 500 to 1,500 applications, take them off of legacy, which generally happens to be virtual servers running Java, and how do we get them onto a platform like a PCF or an AWS or a GCP? Um, so a lot of that type of work. I think executive leadership is bought in it and believes that the cloud is here and it's here to stay. And more than that, they want to move beyond just the cost savings of, look, I can use this cloud, which means I can shut down my data center. Um, they want to get beyond that and really start to, to realize the power that the cloud brings around sort of continuous deployments, DevOps, test automation, right? A lot of, a lot of savings and you can de-risk a lot of projects by using these techniques. Um, so there's that part. And, th and then one last plug for Accenture. Obviously a lot of, a lot of hiring happening. Right. Um, so specifically within Columbus, we're looking at hiring over 100 people next year, all around cloud native engineers. And I know that's happening across the US and globally for us. So, much like everyone else, which I think I've heard everyone in there talk with. Uh, definitely, if they're interested, reach out. Yep, there's definitely a lot of hiring <laughs> happening, uh, hiring conversations at this conference. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great conversation. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you very much.